Your borders are merely a construct. I prefer to think of myself as a citizen of the world. so kind, would you mind introducing yourselves? Uh, I'm Shrevin, I play bass. And I'm Dave, I play drums. Luke, guitar. I'm Janik, and I sing. And the band that you sing for, and play guitar and play bass? And Parasites. Play also, Parasites. Yeah. From? Montreal, Canada. Excellent. And right now we are in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, uh, in front of the new Rumapi, which uh, they just set up last week, so you guys, I think, are... Fourth show, third show, fourth show. Third show. Either the third or fourth show. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you guys are the first uh, first foreign band to play this really? this incarnation of Rumapi. Yeah, because um, it used to be in a different part of this yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, I actually um, have been before. Okay. Like when, last year. Uh, I, just, I came through here traveling, not with a band. But. Cool, cool. So you have been to Southeast Asia before. Yeah. How, how long were you in uh, Malaysia? Uh, just a few days. Any particular reason? I was on my way to Indonesia. <laughs> That's a good reason to be in Malaysia. Yeah. Either that or you're in Singapore on your way to uh, Thailand. Yeah. No, yeah. Those, are, those are like the two reasons to be in Malaysia. I think it might be too noisy. This is not your first Asian tour, right? You guys uh, have toured Japan. 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 Last year, yeah. Okay. In August last year. But this is your first tour as a band through Southeast Asia? Yeah. 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 Okay. Has anybody else been to Malaysia or Southeast Asia before? Just Dave. Just Dave. Okay. Not as a band, right? Just like yeah, I was, yeah, I was here just traveling. Yeah. And you liked it so much, you tricked the rest of them into coming. I think maybe they tricked me into coming. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Dave and Trevor just joined the band like recently. So uh, I tricked them. <laughs> that was really hard. <laughs> how, did, uh, how did the Southeast Asian tour come together? Uh, well, actually, I was in touch with uh, Danny from uh, Indonesia. And... Um, just for like a couple of years, we've just been ex exchanging on Facebook, and then uh, he proposed to do uh, the release the demo version of, of our demo actually, and then after that he said, "Oh, you really should come to Southeast Asia," and I was like, "Yeah, I would love to, but we're going to Japan, so we can't afford it. Maybe next year." And then just like, yeah, we just kept talking, and yeah, here we are. 
you're doing a pretty extensive Southeast Asia trip because you'll be in the region for about a month, right? Yeah, I think it's like uh, it's almost almost like five a little weeks. over two weeks. No, it's, it's no. 32 days. I think. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm well, that's with us. That's with, with Australia. Australia. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah, so like basically uh, one Singapore show, four Malaysian show, and about like maybe nine, uh, nine days <laughs> in, uh, in Indonesia. And then we have about like the same amount in, in Australia. So cool. I think two shows, I think, though. Are you guys traveling pretty light? I mean, how? Uh, I mean, well, I got I got one backpack, and I'm all, I'm also be staying in Australia for a year after this, so that's pretty light, I think. <laughs> but in terms of gear, I mean, it's basically just oh no, like, no gear at all. Yeah, yeah. like we're borrowing every show. Yeah, yeah. like picks yeah. and drumsticks. Yeah, because we we got told that uh, Australia is a bit like the United States, you know, so it's very strict. So if we would show up with gear or anything or merch, we would have to <clears throat> like apply for work visa. So we decided to just like uh, do it. Actually, we arranged for some people that were coming at uh, a festival in, in, in Montreal in, at the end of September uh, to like pick up some shirts and tapes and like just go back with, with, with to Australia. So we brought shirts here though for Montreal, but yeah, in the states they actually tried tried to give a shit for that. <laughs> told, told us not to do it again. So, yeah, uh, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they had a picture attached to our passport, and they were asking, like, what is that? I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's a box, it's, it's shirts. And I was like, well, maybe next time you'll have a problem with that. I'm like, well, we're not going to the States. We're going to Singapore, you know? And they're like, well, whatever. Like, that's the States. But they know that. <laughs> no, I was, I was in New York City right after 9-11, so yes, I, I know all about yeah, that. Um, yeah, it was a fun time to be a brown man with a beard. Yeah, no Anyways. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, it's it's very early into your tour, but how has Barring Gear worked out for you guys? It's been good. Thank it's been you. okay. All right. I think overall it's been very fine. I mean, I, me especially, being a singer, you know, like, even, like I've, I, I've experienced, like, way worse situation in the United States. You know, like, playing basement shows with no PA almost, like, non-existent, no money or nothing, you know, at least my voice after three shows. And Singapore show was... Like I could hear everything last night. I could hear everything tonight. I think I'm gonna be okay. So, yeah. So well, checks out. Please with that. Yeah. Well, that's that's Singapore. Like Singapore is is essentially the cleaner, nicer version of Malaysia. I don't know if uh, it's very has, clean. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a Switzerland of Asia, basically. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm hoping that things are things stay at that level for you guys in Indonesia, but be prepared for. Yeah, might be a bit less. Uh, yeah, but again, like. Yeah, we don't care. We come from North America. We know that you know Indonesia is a different, a right. different world. So. Yeah, yeah we're, we're just, just we're just stoked to meet other yeah. punks and like adventure yeah. basically. Because so. I mean, that, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure it's before the whole band, but like. Personally, like it's always it, every tour, especially into international tours, like because the states, you know, we've toured so many times in the states. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of like an uh, experience slash vacation slash tour. You know, so we prepare. We always prepare. It's like we know we're not gonna make our ticket back. We know we're not gonna make money. That's why we decided to do Australia also because we're like, okay, maybe we can recuperate a little bit on it because it's a bit rough. You know. Mm -hmm taking off work for like uh, a few months, you know, in, in his case, and but uh, yeah, so it's, it's everything's fine, you know, it's all good.
so let's talk about Parasites. From what I've read, you guys are described as UK 82 punk. Please. I would say more in UK 82 influenced punk. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, please kidding. explain to someone who grew up on Metallica Megadeth what that means. Uh, he writes pretty much everything, so <laughs> he's answering. <laughs> I mean, when I like when I read the songs, I bear like the bands that I'm more uh, writing the style of is like Puke and uh, Sweden and Kafka Process, more no, like Norwegian and Swedish bands. But I guess like they were kind of similar to that style. I don't know. Well, was that tag applied by other people, and then you guys just kind of have to live with it, or uh, yeah. Sort of, yeah. I find it weird that we were getting called UK82 because we're Canadian in <laughs> 2017, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, how, I mean, would, how would you describe the music that you make? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, hardcore punk. Yeah, but, but I mean, But yeah, I, I guess, like, UK82 inspired. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. But, I mean, of course, it depends, like... Uh, yeah, the UK82, like, yes, you can. You have UK82 conflict, which is totally different. You know, we're not anarcho-punk, that's for sure. So we're more on, like, the raw punk side, you know? But yeah, we have a little you know, Finnish like influence here and there. Japanese, and the Japanese stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, like it's a very mixed. Yeah. Just like '80s punk influence. Yeah. Band from like all over the world. Oh, wow. Bands from all over the world. I guess. <laughs> so you guys are based in Montreal. I'm guessing that all of you or most of you speak French. No, just moi. Just you. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't speak French. Dommage. <laughs> um, do you also sing in French? No, actually. Uh, why did you choose English? I've been in bands for over 20 years, and I think I've sang in French. Uh, I sang like three songs in French overall. I just feel like... Um, she thinks it sounds dumb. Yeah, I think it sounds <laughs> weird to me. Like, uh, And plus, I speak Quebecois, so it's not the same as French from France, you know? So I think the, the, the accent and... I don't know, for me, like French is very like poet, poetic language you know it doesn't have the the raw edge that punk has you know so it can't i don't know i don't know how to explain it but it just doesn't work for me you know i like and i also think that it's more uh, universal so it's easier you know like if people want to understand what i want what i want to say you know but um <laughs> uh, would you say it gets your message across to a wide audience yeah that's it yeah and i just yeah just feel also french is way longer you know, if I want to say something, it's going to yeah. take maybe like twice as more words. So I can't fit in 4-4, four, four, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, like, that's another reason, too. Like, it just sounds like, I don't know. It's, it's, although it's, there it's are bands that do, do that kind of stuff in French, like, as ill. Yeah, but they do, like, more like the kids, you know, like, nah, 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 nah. they have more time to, oh, it's, it's faster, so it's like, uh, yeah, I can't just fit all the words that I would want to say in a short uh, time, you know. Sure. <laughs> Wait till you get to Indonesia and hear the way that they uh, they speak there because mm. they have the perfect language for hardcore Papa, punk. Yeah, yeah, it's just like very fast and staccato and like <laughs> like Japanese. Isn't it? Isn't it uh, yeah. Malay though? Don't uh, they speak the way Malay? the roots of the languages are very similar, and also the root of uh, Tagalog, which is what they speak in the Philippines, uh -huh. is also based on like the same like Malay kind of structure. But the way they speak uh, Bahasa Indonesia is very different from the way that we speak Bahasa and Malayu. Um, like, if you listen to the way, like, you'll hear it a little bit here, but yeah. the way they speak is a little bit sing-songy, and it's like up and down, and, you know, right. a little bit melodic. The way they uh, they speak it in, in Indonesia is like, like, literally you feel like like you're being assaulted. It's just like, cut and dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut and yeah. dry. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, that's kind of like, yeah. And I'm going to get in so much trouble for doing that, but, uh... <laughs> yeah. The last release that you guys did was a split with Secto, right? Yep. Uh, how did uh, how did that come about? Uh, actually, that's that's like a collaboration with like five uh, labels, which is uh, Disco's MM from um, California, uh, Rat Trap from Colombia, obviously, De Realité, which is a new newer Montreal-based uh, uh, label. And they also have like a web zine and like you know they're very um, uh, political, like an activist uh, punks. Uh, Help me out here. It's just Rakos. Oh uh, yeah, Rakos like Nari from uh, from Life from Japan, and which is the last one? Damn, <laughs> this looks oh, bad. <laughs> How many people put out this record? Five. Jesus. Was it another Montreal? 
how it came about is like uh, I brought up? Sekta and Dead Hero to, to Varney like two years ago. <laughs> you knew the band? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, well we just uh, were chatting mm. and then they invited us to Colombia last year uh, before Japan. So we went to Colombia and then, yeah. Well, which, they played Varning too. Before. Well, that's what I said, yeah. Okay. yeah. Varning is the festival that she does. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, like, just like, yeah. Just decided to like do a split together and uh, all these bands collaborated. I uh, disabled. So, how long have you been doing this festival? Eleven years. Wow. This year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, is there a focus? A specific type of music? A specific. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, I. UK eighty two punk. No. <laughs> From Canada. It's it's just really like I'm gonna sound maybe weird, but it's like really just because I book everything. Like, well, I book the bands. You know, like I have a lot of help. Like Dave helped this year, and like, you know, I have like a whole crew of like. Uh, a per person that helps me out like like making food for the bands hosting the bands you know so i really try to take care of everybody and of course the staff of catacombs and, and everybody my sound tech and whatever but um yeah as as far as like booking goes it's just it's just like bands i like and it's bands that i want to support also because it's like very diy international festival so i won't i don't want reunion bands i don't want you know i had it happened once when I read the invitation from Sweden and I regretted it so much. It it just really turned sour. So after that I was like, I don't want that I don't wanna be that kind of festival, you know. So it's it's I mean it's it's mixed, you know, it's like it can go to like I had a lot of like post punk in the early earlier like years. Now I think it's kinda of wearing off but um and like a lot of like of course like cross D beat, raw punk, you know, so it's it's just uh I'm just trying to like mix up <clears throat> like newer bands, you know, that are not really known to maybe the majority of our scene, you know, but it, I, how can I say that? It's it's really like a really small portion or we have a different network, you know, like I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, you know. So in Montreal, there's like a lot of like different cliques, you know, like everywhere else. And actually, the people that come to Varning are not ma in majority like locals. Because the locals are like, what the fuck is that? Like, we don't know half the bands that you're putting up, you know, and it's kind of scary sometimes for me, and I'm, like, stressing out. But at the end, it's, like, a lot of people from the States, uh, Australia, Europe, Japan. Like, it's, you know, usually I have a Japanese band, Swedish, because it's a varning, so it's kind of, like, from the Swedish, Swedish a varning okay. from gotcha. compilation. Okay. So I try to keep it the, that way.
tell me about catacombs. What is catacombs? So that's a, a venue that uh, I, we started, me and my partner, Clody, uh, like 11 years ago, actually. And we actually did two years of, like, really building a business plan, like, really doing, like, legit, you know, like, it's, it's a legit venue. Before that, we had a venue called Lix, the X, uh, that was uh, open in 1998. And we also, also took, like, two years to to open it and we had to like fight the city and blah blah which we did the same with catacombs because people didn't want us to be established there you know gentrification is really big everywhere so and uh, was, was it a quality of life issue that they say they didn't want a venue because of it's just they didn't they didn't want punks in their neighborhood uh, but we're already at there for a long time they just you know they didn't want us to have an established spot you know a place you know that we could call our own but, uh, and then after Licks, like when we moved, um, when we opened Catacombs because we got evicted. And then the first Catacomb got evicted too because of gentrification. And then we moved to another place. And now I think we're going to move soon because gentrification is happening again. So I'm just, yeah, it's kind of sorry in my life. But uh, yeah, it's a co op. Uh, Licks was a non profit organization, which is very close to a co op. Like the, the structure is kind of the same. You have like a, a board. How you say that? board council like a yeah, administration like whatever <laughs> administration and uh, but I, I, we thought like the co-op would be more suitable for what we wanted to do like including more uh, members because there's a membership going on and, and everything but we don't have a lot of members actually we're only three women for like 11 years but um, yeah it's hard to get people to commit as much as, as you commit you know and we're not really well paid we're not like half kind of half paid you know so it's but I don't know for me it's it's my life and it's it's very worth it and I think we contribute to the scene a lot in Montreal and try to bring all the, the the different scenes together, all the different cliques, you know, like, because you have, like, the Western Montreal Island clique, the Eastern, which is us, you got the Myland, which is North, and and before, and the Oi, Skinhead, Sharp Skinhead, you know, before it was all divided, and I feel, I'm not, I don't want to take credit, but I think it's just, it, it just happened at some point that it, it's like a converging point, I feel, because it's, like, right downtown, it's right, right in between, like, all these, like, areas, you know. So I think it, I don't know, I think it's, it's good. <laughs> what advice would you give for the Rumapi guys who've been doing something similar for the last, I don't know, six years? And I'm, also facing I, similar I've issues I've never been to the old place, you know? But what is the conversion? Like? I mean, uh, I don't know if any of us are qualified to speak on uh, yeah, their situa advice. the situation <laughs> here. They seem like they have it under control. Yeah, yeah, this shit together. This place is pretty <laughs> awesome, so. Yeah. I don't think any of us know how it is to run a venue in uh, Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's just a completely context, different context. So. But they sure. did they did say that the the rent went double at uh, this new location, and we talked a bit about like the business taxes, which is killing it for us at uh, for Catacombs. That's why we, we're probably going to move out east, sure. which is less like like it's cheaper. So I guess I guess everywhere is the same fucking problem, you know. It's just gentrification is like the one of the biggest issue for for punks and, and the mean, cops, I guess. Here, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, the, the cops aren't crazy about us, but um, <laughs> as long as well, I mean, for for me, one of the issues I see is they're doing their best to try to keep costs down, even when they have an international band playing. Yeah. To get into this show, it's about the equivalent of about five US dollars, probably less than that. And at the same time, their costs are going up. Like they, they yeah. have a EPA, yeah. they have. So that's you know, that's hard so. to keep up with. Yeah. Like definitely. Like yeah, I I, I, I know you. I know what you're talking about. Like we have to like increase the price of the beers, you know, like every year. But we didn't increase it for like two, three years, and then it's just like twenty five cents here and there. But you know, sometimes I feel bad about it because. But at the same time, it's like well, you know, people gotta understand that inflation exists, you know, and like. We still have shows for five bucks. It kind of comes to, you know, between five and, like, it could go to 30 if it's, like, you know, there's, like, example, like, Subhumans UK playing, you know, it's not going to be five bucks, you know, it's not going to be, obviously. So it's, yeah, it's hard. It's hard because you want to remain DIY, you want to rem remain punk, but at the same time, everything goes up, so you don't have a choice. Otherwise, you just put the key in the, in, in the clothes now. So finishing up, uh, is there anything you want to say to the people who will be coming out to see you the next couple of weeks? Thanks for coming to see us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's an honor. Yeah. I think uh, we understand 
that uh, it, these people are probably like a lot poorer than in America, obviously, you know, so it's very uh, appreciative that uh, that they support the international bands, and I think they really do. That's what we heard, you know, like, and that's what we, we've been exper experiencing like, mm -hmm. the past two, three days, you know, so it's really, really awesome. Keep the spirit. <laughs> uh, is there anything in particular that you are looking forward to? Either in Malaysia or in Indonesia? Everything. <laughs> oh, I really am excited to see orangutans in Borneo. <laughs> yeah, you've been yeah. talking about it nonstop. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's gonna go to Bor Borneo? Yeah, Saba. So. Are you guys playing a show in Saba? No. Just hanging, no out there? just hanging out there. Cool. I'm gonna have like a few days in Bali, so we're yeah. looking forward for the beach and like some kind of like relaxing yeah. time. But for hopefully now, hopefully the volcano so. doesn't blow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I think. It's gonna scare. That's gonna that's gonna screw yep. up our travel plans. Yeah. We're flying up, yep. flying from Denpasar to uh, Brisbane, and if there's a volcanic explosion, like all flights will be canceled because of ash. Right. Yeah, then so. you can hang out with your orangutans. Move in with them. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that goes. Hopefully everything's all right. We won't die on this storm. But <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Well, I can't promise anything, but hopefully. I think it's the best way to die <laughs> on the stage or on tour. Whatever. Listen, we've all got to die in Malaysia sometime, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Ah, that's good.